Yeah, so I had a customer call me up. Uh, he usually calls me when he has a difficult task. I know he uses other guys, but he called me up, said he had a leak in the apartment below. When I got there, sure enough, he had a leak in the apartment below. It was coming from the tub on the second floor. Well, I asked him, who did you use? Maybe you should get the guy back. And he goes, no, no, I don't want to call him back. He was one of them clean any drain for forty nine ninety five guys. At any rate, it was evident that there was a compromise in the in the drain line. So I went ahead, proceeded to pull the sink out, break up the floor, made my repairs. And what I did was I recorded a little screencast of the whole project. I did this on uh, actually April 10th, 2017. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, take a look, see what's typical here in Brooklyn, New York. And I will catch you on the other side of this video. So can you really blame the clean any drain for $49.95 guy for poking a hole in this lead trap? I think not, folks. I've done this myself. It's a 100-year-old plus building, and when you put a mechanical snake in an old drain like that, this is the chance you take. That's just what happens. If the water doesn't go down, you pretty much have no choice. Opened up the floor here, and as you can see, going right over the middle of that drain is a half-inch uh, abandoned galvanized water line. On the left, the lead is actually soldered onto a solder nipple that's screwed into the cast iron waste stack. And on the right, you'll see the T that goes up to the overflow and takes care of the tub drain. In this shot here, you're going to see the blown out trap. Snake went in there. Now, I don't know why, but they used to put clean outs on the bottom of lead traps. They knew these traps were going to be buried. Why would you put a clean out in? Still trying to figure that one out, folks, but uh, that's the way they used to do things in the old days. And over here on the right, you could have seen that blown out trap again. And in the middle there, you'll see a little hole. I guess once he got his snake through or he was pulling it back, he actually finished off a, a weak part of that lead. But this drain was destined to be replaced. No doubt about it, folks. Next up here, you're going to see the tub strainer at the 7 o'clock position. I knocked the piece out, collapsed it into the strainer, and, and my uh, focus here was to collapse that strainer in on itself so I could actually free it from the shoe. And what you'll see here coming up is how I actually took a cold chisel and I knocked the strainer in to free it from the shoe itself. Now you have to be very careful when doing this because you got to use a little cold chisel. And if you chip the tub, uh, you're going to owe your customer a tub. This is not for the DIYer. This is for the professional only, in my opinion. I then took my strainer tool and uh, with the use of a 14-inch wrench, counterclockwise, uh, had a tough time getting this out, got it out, but it was not easy. Again, this is not for the DIYer. I suggest you call a pro for a job like this. And you'll see here I have the actual shoe in my hand. That's what I'm holding. That's what was under the tub. And there is a strainer, a picture of the strainer that's been completely collapsed. And uh, that's what aided in getting it out. Now, in this particular home here, uh, it was six families. I could not replace it with PVC. I had to use cast iron. So I actually clamped onto the existing solder nipple. There was about two inches of usable brass, clamped on my no hub cast iron drain line right onto that uh, ferrule. And then I proceed to run it across. I have a low sealed bath trap. It's a brass bath trap coming up as a galvanized nipple followed by a specialty no hub clamp. Uh, which goes from inch and a half steel or cast iron to inch and a quarter K copper. I inserted the T right into it, took care of the tub drain, took care of the overflow. Here's another shot of that. And then I put my cast iron directly onto the trap. I eliminated a nipple there because I don't like to put galvanized into brass if I don't have to. And in this case, I was able to marry those two with an inch and a half no hub coupling. It worked out real well. And as you'll see here, after everything was done, filled up the tub several times, tested for leaks, put the debris back, customer put the tile back i followed up the next day and reinstalled the sink and that's the way we do it here in brooklyn new york folks just another example of plumbing here in brooklyn so there you go guys i hope you enjoyed that little screencast and by the way to those of you who think i drone on a little too much you know guys why don't you go uh switch off to another channel you know there are a lot of people watching these videos that know nothing about plumbing i have to be very careful about the way I explain things and the way I do things because you can screw things up pretty readily if you don't know what you're doing in the plumbing world.
And that's my disclaimer. Please, these videos are for informational purposes only. Don't act on anything you see. Purely entertainment. For those of you who have made it over to bobsplumbingvideos.com, took that little survey about the type of videos you'd like me to record, thank you. For those of you who haven't yet visited, please get on over there. Take off the type of videos you'd like to see me produce because it'll help me in, in knowing what you guys want to see. For those of you who are subscribed, thank you. For those of you who aren't, please subscribe to the channel. I will see you again real soon in my next video. Stay well, and as always, happy plumbing, guys.